Well, good afternoon again. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you have questions. So I'll have some time if you have questions. That way we get the mind going instead of taking a nap. <laughs> and then I have a very simple message. Usually the one in the afternoon is the simplest because my tummy is full of stomach. I mean, it's food and it's messing up my mind, perhaps yours as well. So I want to keep it simple and short. Okay, do we have any questions so far? Something that I said or you want to know? Uh, just raise your hand. If not, we'll go right ahead. Okay. Well, happy to be with you again. And um, praise the Lord for calling us to light out of darkness for such a time like this. This afternoon, I want to talk to you about this book, The Great Controversy. I'm sure you know about it. And let me tell you, when uh, Sister White was writing the book, I said writing because that's what she did. She's not the author of the book. She's the writer of the book. Because the Holy Ghost is the author of the book. But when she was writing the book, twice, Satan tried to take her out. Twice. That's how much he hates that book. Imagine. And says that God did not allow her to die, even though he wants to kill her, he did not allow that to happen because we needed the book. However, he allowed her to suffer so she could grasp the importance of the book that she was written, writing. So no, no wonder when the book was done, eventually the book was done and finished, for two years, the people in leading position would not publish the book. That was in the 1980s. 1980s. For two years. 18, 1880s, I'm sorry. 1880s. For two years, they did not allow the book to be printed. And she said then, what you have done, you are responsible before God. And one day, you'll be before the bar of God, and you'll be accountable for what you did. How many people could have been saved that were not? We don't know. And then eventually, when the book was printed and put out, it still, it was with the best um, war witches. It was kind of lukewarm. Uh, however, by the grace of God, we have the entire book today. 42 chapters. Uh, you know that a few years ago they printed a new edition, which is the, the great, what is the great hope? Hoax, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> that would be a better title. <laughs> but it's just 13 chapters. So 42, 13. You see that 29 chapters were left out. That's a lot. And not only that, the 13 chapters, not are, are they are not all the chapters. They, I mean, every chapter that is there is not 100% what is in the book. Still, there are portions of some of the chapters that are not there. And if you see the book, it says that it was modified. That's what it says at the beginning, modified. What is a modified? It's a GMO. So it's a GMO book. I don't know if you follow my... my it, it, because GMO what is, is generally modified organism, right? That's a GMO. So that, that little book is a GMO. Can you, can you have a, a harvest for eternity planting a GMO seed? You, it won't. That's right. You, you can try, but you're not going to have a harvest for eternity with a GMO seed. You need, a, you, you need the, the, the whole enchilada, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you, because that's the book that God gave us. It's like the Bible. I mean, if you take books out, it's not the entire Bible, because what is the meaning of the word Bible? Books. So in this book, you have a library. Imagine that. Because you have books. So this is a library, an inspired library. So the same thing with the book that he gave us. If you take some of it out, it's not really the book that he gave us. It's just a part of what he gave us. 
And not only what they took out, what they left in is not really the current truth for this time. There's no mark of the beast, there's no the seal of God. None of that is, is in, in, the, in the great hope or, or host. It's, it's, it's just a book to pretend that they're doing something we're not really doing anything. Uh, that's why I said that uh, Elder uh, Wilson, he might be the president, but he's not the head. Because he said, let's give this book out. They said, no, nope, we're going to give a little tiny book. He says, Let, let's work the cities from outposts. They said, no, nope, we're going to go into the cities and do the work in the cities. That's not the way it's going to be done, friends. He says no to women or the nation said yes, yes, we're going to go ahead and do it. So he might be the president, but he's not the head. There are so many committees and so many people that, that even though one man perhaps wants to do what is right, it's not going to happen. Uh, so why the importance of this book? Because this book gives us an, uh, the entire idea of the great controversy from heaven to heaven, if you know what I mean. Not just what happened here, what happened there, and then here, and eventually there again. So it gave us the entire controversy between Christ and Satan. And that's why it's such a wonderful book. Not only because of that, also it talks about the, the major players at the end of time. Talks about the papacy, for example. See, Revelation and Daniel, you have the papacy, but it's in symbolic language, not in this book. When you read the papacy, that's what it says. It says the papacy. There's no doubt about it. When it says America is America, everybody knows what the book is saying. It's, it's not symbolic, it's literal. So we don't have to invent the wheel, it's already here. We have to use the wheel we have, and it's, we're going to go far with it. So then it tells us what is not important. For example, in the Christian world today, what are, what are they expecting? The secret rapture, right? Uh, friends, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's so secret that not even God knows about it yeah. because it's not in the Bible. That's how secret it is. It was an idea made up by the Jesuits during the Counter-Reformation. So the people would not see the little horn on Daniel 7 as what it is, as the papacy. So they created the future understanding of prophecy. What everything is going to happen over there in Israel. That's what they say. Well, the temple will be built. The sacrifices will take place again. And then a guy who knows where over there in Europe will rise. And then he will, he will be friendly with the Jewish for three and a half years. And then the last three and a half years, he will be the enemy. He will join with the Russians and the Chinese. And there will be World War III. I mean, it's, it's wonderful for Hollywood, but it's not in the Bible. It will make a good movie, but it's not reality. But that's what millions of people believe. Not only they believe that, and that's why they're looking to Israel. Oh, what is happening there? What is taking place? And what is Satan doing? He's keeping that place up all the time. You see the conflict and the war. So the people see something is going to happen there. Something is going to happen there. Friends, Israel is out of the prophecy. Yes. It's, not the part, it's not a major player at the end of time at all. Not only that, they believe that when the secret rapture happens, if you did not make it, you will have seven more years to, to get ready for heaven. So that means that, that you have a second chance. Imagine when millions of people will come to the end and then they will realize that they are lost and there is not a second chance. That's tragic, friends. That's tragic. But those ideas came out of the counter-reformation movement created by the Council of Trent where the Jesuits created the future viewpoint of prophecy with the rapture and Israel in prophecy, the seven dispensation that they believe in, the second chance, it didn't make it, you know, during the rapture time. All of that was created then. And we believe in that? The evangelicals today. Because the Catholics don't believe that. They believe that, that to go to heaven you have to die. Then you go to heaven. 
but, but they, they don't believe in the secret rapture, and they don't really expect in Jesus to come a second time either. So we, we are the people that really knows or should know about prophecy because we had the understanding of the Bible, first of all, and then we have a comment, a commentary on prophecy. For example, the book talks about Islam. Two pages out of 700 pages. So it's important, yes. Is it very important? No. However, the people here in America, what do they fear? Islam. Islam, friends, is a decoy being used by the papacy. So people are afraid. They, they're looking at Islam. Oh, look, look what they're doing. They're killing Christians. And they're, yes, they are doing that. However, on this side, and nobody knows, and nobody's looking that way, they're looking the other way, and the papacy and America are working together to control the world. So it's a perfect decoy. It's a perfect decoy. Don't fall for it. Because even that idea is coming into our ranks. Let me tell you. They believe that Islam, instead of the papacy, is a major prayer at the end of time. This book only talks about Islam two pages. Not even 1% of the book is about Islam. But you can read about the papacy, about America, and so much more. On, on, in, in this little little book. Well, it's not that little, but, but just, just to, to use the, the word little in reference to the Bible. Okay? So we see that Islam is being used as a decoy, and the people are falling for it. If, if you go to the evangelical churches, it's Islam. Islam. And they're afraid that Islam, friends, is Islam. Let, let, let me tell you what happened. The God of Islam is the same God of the Catholic Church. Same God. Allah, which is the moon God of the people in, in, Mid, in, in Middle Persia uh, and, and the uh, Pacific, the, uh, what's the name? Um, I forgot. Mesopotamia area was the, the moon God of the people then when, when Muhammad was creating the Islamic faith that was the moon god of his tribe. That's why when you see the flag of an Islamic nation, what do, you, what do you have in it? The crescent moon. Because it's the god of the moon, the moon god. Okay? So, when, when he was creating his religion in the 6th century, he was going nowhere. I mean, he was trying to be a nice guy, Mohammed. Let's, let's, let's be loving, let's be kind, let's get along. If you're Jewish, that's fine. If you're Christian, you're fine. But he was going nowhere. Then his wife, or his future wife, she was a nun. She was a Catholic nun. And she was 50 years older than he was. 15, one five. 15. No, no, not 50. 15. 15 years older. When, 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 when they married, she was 40. And he was 25. Uh, and she was a nun. She had no plan of getting married. She, she had dedicated her life to be a Catholic nun. However, she went to see the bishop. Says, uh, Bishop, what more can I do for my church? And he says, are you willing to do really, to do something great for the church? Yes. Go and marry Mohammed. So the Catholic church is there in, in the formation of the Islamic faith. Not only he married him, she was wealthy. He was not. So all the wealth she dedicated to the new faith, to the Islamic faith. And then he went to Mecca. What happened in Mecca? In Mecca, he became now aggressive and violent. Instead of preaching love and tolerance as before, 
Now there was only one way, or you become one of us, or you die. And that's, that's what is written in the Quran. Uh, and you have people saying that, that, that the God of, uh, of the Islamic people and the God of Christianity is the same God. God, please don't fall for it. If you read the Quran, and I have read some of it, it's not the same God at all. At all. It's a different God. What they're trying to do is to deceive us. As they're deceiving the Islamic people as well. They want them to believe that we are just one faith and we have the same God. You have a different opinion and we have a different opinion, but basically we're the same and we're going to go the same way. That's a lie. Okay? Now, he says, if you don't become one of us, if you don't convert, you die. There's no other way. And that's how Islam spread throughout Asia, by force. You have to become one of us. If not, you die. And not only by that, but also... By saying, for example, to the, to the warriors, to the men fighting for Islam, uh, you can have as many women as you want. And you can rape them. That's fine. You can take the, the daughters and make them your, your wives. And 20% and, and of what we get is mine, Muhammad said, and 80% is for you. So there was an interest, a financial interest, in, in becoming a Muslim. And so, and so forth. Well, you see that at the beginning, the Catholic was there creating Islam. Why? Because Islam basically wiped out Christianity in the Middle East. In the year 2050, after Christ, the people of what is today Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, for the most part, they were becoming Christians, real Christians, Bible-believing Christians. And they were not willing to come under the control of the papacy. The papacy tried to conquer them. So well, you have to acknowledge the bishop of Rome as the head of the church and say, no, we have our Bibles. We don't need him to tell us what to believe or what to do. So they rejected the supremacy of the bishop of Rome. And Rome says, if you're, if you're not going to come under my control, I'm going to wipe you out. I'm going to kill you and get rid of you. And that's why Islam was created by Rome, as a way of getting even with the Christians that were not willing to come under the control of the papacy. And as you see, the Middle East today, for the most part, is what? It's Muslim. You have 5%, 7% Christians. For the most part, is Muslim. They wiped out Christianity not from Turkey all the way to China and India. There were Christians already, more Christians there than in Europe. More. And they basically wiped out Pakistan, India, China, wiped out Christianity from the Middle East all the way to the Far East. Yeah. No, no, no. That, talk to me. That's, I like that. <laughs> if you talk to me, I'm happy with you. Then today, what happened today? Now they're using Islam again to wipe out Christianity in the West. That's why you see today the immigration of Muslims to the West. To the West. And when, when you see a Muslim person, please don't get mad. They're, they're as human as we are. And, and we need to work for them, not against them. Don't let, don't let the bias come into your mind. Perhaps they are here and we have a job to do. So that's why, as you see, five years ago, four years ago, there was more than immigration. There was an invasion of Muslims to Europe. Where did they go for the most part? Germany. England. 
Sweden, Norway, Finland. What do those countries have in common? There you go. Not so much to the Catholic nations, they went. They went to the so-called Protestant nations. Because they are creating conflict between Islam and the Protestant nations of the world. That's why they're coming here to America as well. To create conflict. Because the Quran says you have to kill the Jewish people and the Christian people. They are not good people. That's what the Quran says. If you read the beginning of the Quran, it talks about tolerance. But that was when he was a nice guy. But when he was really the prophet, he wrote about, if you don't convert to us, we have to kill you. There is no other way. Because the world will come under the control of the Islamic faith. That's what the Quran says. So what is happening? You have millions of Muslims from Africa, Northern Africa, and Asia coming into the Protestant nations, or used to be Protestant nations of Europe and America and Canada as well, creating conflict. Because the mindset is very different to the mindset of the Christians. Number one, there is no religious freedom in Islam. There's only one faith. And if you don't believe that faith, you're dead. There's no religious freedom. So they come into America with that mindset. There's no religious freedom. Religious freedom is no good. It's from the devil. And we need to get rid of it. Number two, the overwhelming the financial condition of those countries. People, and this is what I have here, for, in, here in America, people that have come from Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, you know, countries that we have been fighting in, they come into the country, 88% of them are on welfare. 88% of them on welfare. Oh yeah, yeah. They used to. So what what is what what America is doing is fighting crusades for the papacy right now. As, as they did in the 11th century, they are doing it again. America army is fighting for the papacy right now. When you see them in Somalia, when you see them in Iran, when you see them in 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 Syria, and you name it, they are fighting once again crusades. How did I know? Because President Bush said it. And then he was correct. Oh, no, 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 don't say that word. Well, too late. He said it. It's not about freedom. It's about control. It's controlling those Muslim countries. And even though they have a Muslim leader, and he looks like one of them, his mindset is working in behalf of the papacy. It's working in behalf of the papacy. That, that's why you have this the uprising that you saw in the Middle East the year 2010, 2011, all of that was orchestrated by the CIA, by the CIA for orchestrated all of that, and paid for by Saudi Arabia. So the CIA created Al-Qaeda because Os Osama bin Laden, you know that name, I'm sure. He was working for the CIA for many years. Remember when the Russians went into Afghanistan? In 1979, well, some of you were not alive that time. I was. <laughs> they, came, they came into Afghanistan. Why? Because the United States prepared a trap for the Russians. Soviet Union then. It wasn't Russian then. What happened? They created Khomeini in Iran. Khomeini was in France. He was the leader of the Islamic faith, and he was in France. And he was in France in a beautiful big house, paid by the British, the French, and the Americans. And he had no desire whatsoever to go back to Iran. He was doing very well in, in Paris. 
He had people cooking for him, do his laundry. He had a limousine going back to Europe. There's nothing there for me. I'm doing very well where I am. Then the CIA said, no, we need you there. We're going to get rid of the Shah. Shah means king in Farsi. He was the king of, of Persia. We're going to create a revolution in Iran. Why? Because Iran was prospering. Don't forget, Iran is Muslim, but it's not Sunni. It's Shia, which is the liberal side of Islam. The Sunnis are the conservative uh, of, of Islam, like Saudi Arabia, for example. So by, by creating chaos in, in, in Iran, they created chaos in the Middle East until today. That's why you see the president saying, oh, you people in Iran, you, you get in line. He's pretending, friend. Is, is following orders from another man that is not even in Washington, D.C. It's far from Washington, D.C. They created the Iranian Revolution. And they, cre and they destroyed a nation that was prospering. The Shah of Iran, he was Muslim, but he gave freedom to the people. If you want to be a Christian, go ahead and be a Christian. It's like Saddam Hussein in Iraq. He gave money to the Christian to build churches, to build hospitals, to build schools, and he was a Muslim. He says, I'm not going to fight you. If you behave, you're a good citizen. Good luck. You know, before the war, there was 1.3 million Christians in Iraq. Today, less than a quarter of a million Christians. America destroyed Christianity in Iraq. Now the people in Iraq, they want Saddam back. Too late. Too late. I'm not saying he was a nice guy. He was a dictator. But he has no problem with you believing whatever you want to believe. If you want to be a Buddhist, be a good one. Make sure they're a good one. You want to be a Seventh-day Adventist? You know, the, the country in the Middle East with most Seventh-day Adventists was Iraq. Over 100,000 Seventh-day Adventists. He gave money to build our church and school in Baghdad. Saddam Hussein, a Muslim. A, a guy that was not the best, but, but he says, if you want to be a Seventh-day Adventist, no problem with you. Be, be a Seventh-day Adventist. So they created the Iranian Revolution. What happened then? They made the Russians believe that the revolution in Iran was going to spread into Russia. And the only country between Iran and Russia was Afghanistan. So the Russian pretend, trying to prevent an invasion of the Iranian Revolution, which is not good, they were radicals. They invaded Afghanistan, and they fell on, on a trap. Because now the CIA funded the Taliban, the Al-Qaeda. They created Osama bin Laden. He was paid with tax dollar that you and I paid. <laughs> okay. And he was, a, he was a, an employee of the CIA for many years. Now the Taliban and Al-Qaeda were fighting the Russians. And eventually they defeated the Russians. Because they knew the terrain. They knew where to hide and so forth. And eventually the Russians could not continue being in Afghanistan. And they went back to Russia. And that was the end of it. They lost the war. But now something happened that is unbelievable. Now the CIA saw a place where to grow poppy seed. Opiate. Opiate. And there in Afghanistan, you have the best fields in the world for poppy seed. Don't forget the CIA is an evil organization. Means Catholics in action. I, I, I didn't say that. I have it with me. I can show you the article. The, a Catholic newspaper is saying CIA means Catholic in action. He was founded by a Catholic. And when he died, the Pope 
gave him a medal. Because doing a work that goes beyond ordinary work. And he gave a medal, a, a medal to the guy that founded the CIA. Supposedly, the CIA was founded to fight against communism. So it was supposedly, because that's not true. But that's how the American people believed, and that's the idea that was sold to them. This is an agency that is going to destroy our enemies. And people say, oh, yeah, because, you know, the, the Cold War, I mean, Russia is the evil empire. Who said that? Reagan said that, right? Remember? The evil empire. Well, they were evil. <laughs> I mean, I'm, he wasn't wrong about that, but they were not the only evil empire in the world. He didn't say the other evil empire. Now, the poppy city. Don't forget, the CIA has a budget. And no one is allowed to see the budget to the CIA. Only the president, by request. No senator, no member of Congress, no one is allowed to see what money is coming in. Because they are using drug money to finance the operations around the world. Nobody knows how many people are working for the CIA either. They, I know they give us a number, but that's not the real number. Friends, we are in a country that is becoming more and more evil. Sad to say. Sad to say because this country was the best country ever. Was. It's not. And it will not be. I believe that eventually what Elder John said will happen. When he said, I see a time that is coming where the people of God will wish that they were not in the United States. That's why they want to build a wall. They're saying, oh, we don't want terrorists to come into America. We don't want the illegals to come into America. Friends, every nation that has built walls is to keep their citizens in there. So I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor of illegal immigration either. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying that that's why the wall has to be built. And by the way, Bush began to build the wall. 500 miles. Then Obama came and he built another 500 miles. And now this president wants to finish the wall. The wall. Now they're making a big deal. Oh, we don't want the wall. Well, hold on. You voted for it. Republicans and Democrats before. You voted for it. And now you're making a big deal. And they want to make a big deal. You know why? Because they are creating tension between races. Legals and illegals. Black and white. Hispanic and so forth. They're creating a, a mixture. So civil war eventually will take place again. Now they have the poppy seeds of Afghanistan under the name of freedom. Well, we're fighting for freedom. That's not true. Eventually, they created Osama bin Laden, the big guy, the bad guy. First, he was a good guy, and then he was the bad guy. There's a book. You, you can read some Operation Gladio, and it talks about what I'm talking about. How the CIA and the Vatican and the drug money of the world are linked. And they are using Afghanistan and so many other countries to create drug trafficking. And guess what? All that money is being used by the CIA. And the drugs are being moved into the United States, especially the big cities. And then you, you have the Latinos and the blacks dying day after day. And it's created by the own government. Also white folks and also Asian. I mean, I'm not saying, but those two minorities are the number ones that have been destroyed by the use of illegal drugs. And that money, people that are dying for it, is being used to continue doing operations that we have no idea of. That's why when the Taliban and the Al-Qaeda were created, then what happened? 
coming closer to our time. Now it was time to really stir the pot. Then they created ISIS. ISIS. Friends, I had the information. It's not from the Review and Herald. It's not Seven Day Adventist writing. Secular media writing. It says, what happened when the war was over in Iraq? Now the U.S. was withdrawing, right? We bring our boys home. But the boys came home. Not all of them, because still there are a lot of them there. But they left behind all the weapons, all the weapons, you know, arms, ammo, tanks, artillery, you name it. It was left there. Then the CIA, working with Saudi Arabia, which is a, a close allied of the United States, trained ISIS and then moved them to Syria, Iraq, and Turkey, and created, created the chaos that we have seen there. When, uh, Mohab, when Gaddafi, I don't know if you remember that name, Gaddafi, Libya, yes. he said, that guy is a bad guy, right, for many years. He wasn't a, he wasn't a, a, a holy man at all. I mean, he was a dictator. The issue with him was that he said, I don't want the American dollar for my oil. You have to pay me with my own money. 90% of the oil he was selling to Europe. Not so much to America, to Europe. Because it's close by. You just, a little bit, you are there. He says, no, I don't want the euro because that's fiat money. I don't, I don't want the dollar. That's fiat money. I want my own money. Because the money then in Libya was backed for gold. And then they got rid of him. Thank you to Hillary Clinton. She orchestrated all of that. Hillary. She was the Secretary of State. She was the Secretary of State. And, 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 and there, you, friends, there are a lot of information there. I don't say you take all your time into looking into this. There's, take more time into this. It's a lot better. But there's a lot of information there in the media. Have you heard of Julian Assange? Yes. What happened to him? He was a reporter. And he found out too much. Too much. He was an Australian reporter. And he was over in England. And he was able to get into the emails of a lot of people, not just Hillary's email. I mean, he got a lot of Hillary's email. And, and, and he found out that that woman is bisexual, by the way. No, not just Hillary. The husband as well. The husband as well. They found out that the Bush family is deep into secret society. Big into the secret society. They found out about Putin in, in, in Russia. And he's a very wealthy man. And he's also working for the same man that Donald Trump is working for. And Kim in June in North Korea, they had the same boss. The same boss. They have no wonder they could not put up with him anymore. And they bribed the, the Equatorian government. Says, if you want money from us, the international bank says, if you want money from us, $10 billion. We're willing to give you, but you have to give us the man in the your embassy in London. And he did. He did. Because he found out that the president of Ecuador is laundering money. And so forth. Uh, he, he found out a lot of things, friends, that I don't even want to know all that he found out. No wonder they want to bring him over here and put him away for good, never to be seen again. Perhaps they're going to send him to Guantanamo Bay, and that's going to be the end 
or Julian Assange, a journalist that was willing to do his work. But he found out a lot of things. Then ISIS was created, white power Christianity in the Middle East, and placed fear in the heart of the Protestant in Europe and America. And now the foreign policy, the foreign policy of America is against Islam, not the papacy, because they have been deceived. That's why the president moved the embassy to Jerusalem. Because the evangelicals believe that Jerusalem is the center of Bible prophecy. <laughs> and they don't see that right here, underneath the knees, the, the, the nose, they are fulfilling prophecy themselves, and they have no idea whatsoever. No idea whatsoever. See, we are the only people that have the right knowledge about final events. So we need to take the book that God gave us. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just use it as it is to finish the work. Let me give you an example. Luther, one day he nailed 95 theses, right? What happened? Let me read it to you. It's in the book. Oh, it's right here. It says, the questions which Luther proposed had in a few days, how many days? A few days. It spread throughout all Germany. No computers, no printing presses yet, no internet, no telephone, no television, just word of mouth. In a few days, every Everybody in Germany knew about the 95 Thesis because of what he did one day and he nailed a piece of paper on a door. But listen, in a few weeks, they have sounded throughout Europe. Did you get that? Few days, everybody knew in Germany. Few weeks, everybody knew in Europe. The printing page, if you know what I mean. Corporate. That's, that's what it was. People now could read the 95 Thesis and say, wow, this is good. Listen, many devout Romanists who had seen and lamented the terrible iniquity prevailing in the church but have not known how to arrest his progress read the proposition with great joy. Recognizing in them the voice of God. They felt that the Lord have graciously set his hand to arrest the rapidly swelling tide of corruption that was issuing from the Sea of Rome. Princes and magistrates, politicians, secretly, I'm going to repeat myself, secretly rejoice that a check was being put upon the arrogant power which denied the right of appeal from his decisions. <coughs> so just about everybody was happy. From the politicians to the simple people. Because they read a piece of paper. That's all they did. And they could see the hand of God in it. And not just the hand of God in it, they could hear the voice of God in it. So what are we supposed to do? To give this book out. It is. Don't take it away. Don't add to it. Just give it as it is. And let the Holy Spirit take care of the result. Says many of the conversions at the end of time will come as a result of the printed page distributed. How many conversions? Many. Many. People might take the book. Ah, I don't want to read it. Put it away. But one day, the Holy Ghost will say, take that book out. Woo! This is good. 
Why did I wait so long? What is happening? It was here. What happened? It was here. So what is left to be happening is here. And they're going to come into the truth. So we need to get this book and just give it to as many people as we can as it is. And let God take care of it. See, your job, my job, is to drop the seed. That's it. From that point on, you and I have nothing to do. Well, we might pray about it. But we have nothing more to do. So if you have money, or if you have little money, buy the book. And give it up. Let me tell you, uh, let me read to you another statement that talks about Luther and Australia. here. It says, thousands were awakening from their less death-like stupor to the joy and hope of a life of faith. Thousands. Just because they read a piece of paper. And when they read it, they could hear the voice of God talking to them. And they could see the hand of God in it. I'm reading from this book. This book is the Great Second Advent Movement, written by Lord Boro. He was one of the pioneers. He's talking about the persecution that was taking place in America around the year 1888. Remember, there was a, a desire to have a national son the law then in America. And it says the persecutions that were then raging against Seventh-day Adventists were taken up in the editorial columns of such papers as the New York Sun, the New York World, the Chicago Inter-Ocean, etc. Articles appeared speaking out freely concerning the unjust course taken against a citizen of the United States for obeying his own conscience and for keeping the very day designated in the commandment. By means of newspaper, listen to this, articles of that character, this subject was brought before millions of people. And we did not pay a penny for it. The newspaper was writing about us. And listen to this, and listen to this. Within one month, how long? 1888, long time ago, no computers, no television, none of that. Within one month, the central truth of the third angel's message was brought to the attention of more people that we have been able to reach in more than 20 years. How long? One month. More people were reached than we have been reaching for more than 20 years. And it was free. It was free. The power of the printed page. We need to understand that. Nowadays, people don't want to read, but anyhow, go out and give the book. And God will bless us for it. Yes, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I want to read to you and then finish. It says, let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work in a manner very much out of the common order of things. And in a way that will be contrary to any human planet. Do we understand that? I don't believe we do. Well, we just, you just said it. So. Well, I just, but... I don't even, I'm not sure that I believe in myself because that, that is saying that God will use things and will work in a way that we have no idea of. No, but you were just talking about how simple and how by such a, by one mouth, one mouth, printed word, how many people will reach. That's pretty simple, right? If, very simple, right. very simple. And then you backed it up by your statement, so. Yeah. That's why I, I don't want to give you my opinion, friends. You know, opinions are like noses. Everybody has one. Uh, that's right. 
I, I, I want to I give you God's opinion because that one counts. It says God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that he's taking the reins in his, into his own hands. The workers will be surprised by the simple means that he will use to bring about and perfect his work of righteousness. Amen. That's what we're talking about this morning. Those who are accounted good workers will need to draw nigh to God. That they will need, they will need the divine touch. They will need to drink more deeply and constantly at the fountain of living water in order that they may discern God's work at every point. So the work will be done with us or without us, Amen. but it will be done. You know, every single day, you have a, a quarter of a million new babies. Every single day. And every single day, you have 150 people dying. So what is the net worth? I mean, uh, what is increased every single day? 100,000. That's a lot of people every single day. However, we are baptizing about 3,000 people every day. Are we gaining ground or losing ground? Big time. Because you have 100,000 people, new people every single day, and we're just baptizing 3% of those. Very little. Something has to happen, friends. And God will make it happen. It's not you and I. God will make it happen. Otherwise, instead of gaining ground, we have been losing ground. And we will continue until God takes the reins. And then he will use simple people and simple means in a short time with no money. No money. Because after the national Sunday law, money is valueless. It has no value for us. That means we have no institutions, no schools, no hospitals, no printing houses, no churches like this one. All of that will be gone. Budget, zero. Faith, big. Right? When God told Moses, take my people out of Egypt, what was his budget? They were slaves. What was the budget? No money. It was a, a deficit. <laughs> says, we have no money, but, we, but I have a stick. That's good enough. I use it. <laughs> when I tell you to use it, you use it. I will take care of you. And every time he used it, something big happened. Amen. Water, food, the, the sea parted. You name it. God was providing for his people. And on the other hand, he was bringing judgment on the enemies of his people. With that one little stick. And for 40 years. That's a long time. They were in the wilderness. What happened to the cloth? What happened to the shoes? I imagine it came from Macy. That's why it was good, right? Right? No? Why was it good? The blessing of the Lord. Said not one single one of them were sick. Psalms 105, 37 said not a single sick person in 40 years in the wilderness. That's a wonderful health plan, friends. That's the one we need to follow, by the way. God, once again, will do the same for his people at the end of time. And then, through very simple means, God will finish the work. So I want to encourage you, not just to read the book, which I hope you do, but then buy it and give it out. Just put it in people's hands. And God will do a wonderful work because his word doesn't come back void. His word, his word always fulfills the purpose for which he was intended. Blessings to you.